A few weeks ago, one of my parents and I were talking about LGBT issues and that sort of topic, and it had come up, you know, meaning no disrespect, but they had said something along the lines of that the current generations tend to be more sensitive towards social issues. And as I was thinking about it, I happened to come up with an analogy. And that analogy was that activism is somewhat like sandpaper. The reason that is, is because when you are sanding a surface, you will start off with a, a bigger grit. I'm pretty sure that the numbers work where it's um, a smaller number, but I will call it a bigger grit. You will start with that and you will remove more material. What You will be taking off bigger chunks and you will be doing most of the work then. And then you will move on to smaller grits that will get more into the smoothing of it, you know, making it a lot more polished looking and nice looking. And you will be removing less and less material as you go, but that does not mean that the work that you are doing with the smaller grits of sandpaper are not helpful and do not work towards creating the smoothest surface possible. And so how that relates is that initially movements will start off by, you know, having some pretty horrible situations where people are fearing for their lives and they are risking everything to make change. And then as the future generations come, they will leave a situation that is less rough, that there is less less risk for them to be harmed and perhaps the issues that they face are not as detrimental. However, at that point they will be working not to protect lives, but to make lives better, to make sure that everyone is treated equally and kindly and that they are given just as much opportunity and the ability to ha be just as happy as everyone else. And that is still incredibly important. When I said that, I was in the mindset that at this point in our society, we were at a pretty fine grit of sandpaper, if we are to use that analogy. But given recent events, I feel like I have been corrected. I feel like our society hasn't come nearly as far as I thought it had when I had said that. And that is truly heartbreaking and terrifying to discover. So, okay. Hi, I'm Ollie, if you don't know me. It is currently 4.37 in the morning, and... I have been on the border of making this video and being too scared to make this video. And sometimes I feel very passionately and other times I just feel scared and like I'm not comfortable enough to do this. So even though it's late, I feel like I should just say what I want to say and what I've been thinking about saying for pretty much the entire time that this has been going on. Take the opportunity and then let it out into the world, I suppose. Even though I am sure my voice <laughs> might not get heard and probably, as seeing as things have been going thus far, probably won't be for a while. However, I have been just filled with such unrest that I have not come out and said anything beyond a very brief Instagram post and a few other things like that. And obviously my perspective on this really just can't be the best. I, aside from obviously not being black, 
I have been pretty sheltered from this issue for most of my life. I grew up in a place that didn't see very many minorities, and this issue, though I've been aware of it for a while, has felt very distant to me, and it has felt like something that would almost be disrespectful for me to discuss or have any sort of say on. But it is clear to me now that people want as many voices out there as as possible. And so here is mine. So this is going to be directed towards people who were like me before all of this more recent activity had started. People who felt distant from this issue. People who felt that these events were unfortunate and that they shouldn't have happened, but do not realize the importance of this. Do not realize how, is, how important it is for things to change. And I am hoping that I will be able to provide you with a different way of thinking about these things and a way that you might be able to see why we are furious. So if you will allow me to, um, I'd kind of like to share a quite emotional experience that I've had recently. It was actually on Blackout Tuesday and on that day, I ended up thinking about this issue a lot. It led me to see a lot of people talking about it. And it led me to see, you know, more and more footage and more examples of this issue happening over and over again. Things that I definitely could not ignore. By the end of the day, I felt like I was suppressing a lot of anxiety and it ended up resulting in a pretty intense panic attack, which I feel like more people are able to relate to that sort of situation than usual right now, just because of the stress that so many of us are under. But while I was totally just flooded with emotions, I had realized something just extremely heartbreaking. And that was that, like I said, I usually feel more comfortable talking about LGBT issues, and that is because I feel like I fit into that group. And then my parents also have been part of that group for a long time. And I thought specifically about one of them who I suppose you could say would be a bigger target for violence related to being LGBT. And I thought about protests that we had talked about and about how there are so many cases still today of trans people being murdered. I realized then that if we were to be dealing with that issue specifically right now, we could be seeing a similar situation of people going out and getting hurt and risking themselves everything to fight that issue. And I realized that just as much passion that I feel towards keeping my family and myself safe is the same passion that should be going towards protecting black people, that not taking part in this is just against everything that I stand for. And at the time, I was thinking very negatively. I felt honestly so hopeless for our society, and I felt like if I'm being honest, I didn't want to live in a world where these things could happen. 
I didn't want to live knowing that there were people out there that were so scared for their lives. That it was such a reality that people were being killed just for existing as they were. So the point of all this is for anyone who has a hard time with understanding why things are happening as they were, I feel that it's important for us to understand things from, a, from their point of view. And it is an extremely emotional issue. So I want you to be able to feel the emotions that come with this. I think it is important for us to understand the pain that people are experiencing from this. It's, it's scary just as much to see the violence as it is to see the people who go on with their lives and are completely unaffected or who excuse this situation or who try to undermine what people are doing for this cause. And so to them, I want you to really think and feel and try to know as much as you can about what people are actually experiencing out there because it's it's not your life but if you want somebody to be there to protect yours if you were to be in a situation like this or your families or somebody else that you care about if you want them to be there backing you up then you need to not be silent. You need to at least be aware and you need to at least know what's going on as much as you're able to handle and as much as is healthy for you. You need to know that this is real. That these are real people and that they matter. My philosophy has always been that everyone deserves to be safe and be happy and to choose exactly what kind of life they want to live, of course, as long as they are respecting others and that no one else should keep them from living the life that is natural and most fulfilling to them. And a life where people are scared of the ones that are meant to protect them is completely unexcusable. And I hope that me talking to you about this will make a difference and maybe protect somebody, somebody out there that is cared about, that matters, and that deserves a safe and healthy life. So I think I'm going to leave it there. It's now 524 and um, Please be safe, and please be kind, and please do what you can. I am going to have in my description some links from someone named Cirrus, um, and I feel that I, I've watched him for a little while now, and I feel that he has some really good uh, discussions on this topic um, from a similar perspective as mine, as an ally, and as somebody who feels strongly about human rights 
and he provides some more fact, the more factual side to things. And um, I would really appreciate it if you would watch that as well, because I think that is also a, a really great thing to keep in mind. And I think with that, um, I will see you when I see you.